Welcome to Ode to Games. My name's Logan Plant. We got a state of play to talk about with Kevin Valine and Zach Ross. What's up, guys? Uh, nothing much. Just uh, oh. blown away. I have a lot the, to talk about. By the state of play stuff. Crazy stuff going on in there. <laughs> the state of play is uh, maybe it's not great. Maybe we're not <laughs> in a great state of play right now. Uh, but for all the complaining from last week's Nintendo Direct... This thing sure makes that event look a lot nicer in hindsight. I think that not necessarily just because of the volume of games shown, but Sony still just doesn't have this cadence down of of the format of how a Nintendo Direct style presentation works. You you look at the lead off game in the Nintendo Direct and it's always something big or it's usually a Smash character, which is a huge deal. And here it's like, five minutes of going over what happens when crash four comes to playstation five and it was like 3d audio haptic feedback and it's like we know this is what the the ps5 does these things aren't a surprise so to start things off i thought that was a really weak way to introduce the show yeah if we're just like going right into it i think that looking at this you can kind of judge the entire state of play by how they opened and ended it. They opened and ended this with mm-hmm. two PS4 games coming over to PS5. That was the big yeah. opener and the what, the thing at the end. I think that's really indicative of how <laughs> of how this state of play went, that those are the two things you choose uh, for your capper mm-hmm. and your start. Yeah, and I thought that they were starting to really improve upon the capper specifically because... I think that Resident Evil 3 Remake was their big announcement at the end of one of these things. And then The Last of Us Part 2 release date, which it did not end up hitting, but still at the time it was very exciting and a a big new trailer for that. And I I think that Final Fantasy VII Remake DLC is a big deal. I think we were talking about this a little bit right before we started the show. It would have been a better opener. It would have been a great, fun thing to introduce the show with. And then... I think Horizon mm-hmm. would have been the perfect thing to end this thing with. Just another little look at it. Um, because, Kevin, you were saying that uh, Jim Ryan was talking about how it might be on track still for a, a second half of the year release. Yeah, it just sounds like Sony is still thinking that this thing's going to come out in 2021. So you would hope that we're going to start seeing more about it pretty soon. We're already wrapping up February, you know? Mm-hmm. I feel the exact same way about God of War Ragnarok. Haven't seen anything about that. Was hoping for something at this state of play. It got absolutely nothing. So I'm still not very confident that game is coming out this year. Um, But we'll have to wait and see. 2021 was just so unbelievable when that was even announced last June. It was like, really? I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, no, I I've, I haven't believed it since it got announced. Yeah. And the state of play has not reassured me. Because <laughs> no. the not only the volume of games shown, but just just... No big hitters, really, and even their their big finish at the end was just some tacked on DLC to an already existing game that's only up for PS5, yeah. mind you, which is a little weird um, for people who aren't migrating over to PS5 quite yet and are mm-hmm. still playing games on the PS4. If they have Final Fantasy VII Remake on the PS4, they're going to have to wait to play this extra little bit. Um, but we'll probably get into that in a minute. Yeah, we can talk about Final Fantasy now because I think it is the biggest thing from this show. Uh, well, so if, Final if we're Fantasy... if we're gonna finish off with if with that, just c- real quick, we've seen enough Death Loop. I've, <laughs> I've wanted to play it for a long time. I, I think we've seen it enough. It just keeps <laughs> showing the same stuff over and over again. Like we get it. Yeah. Um, they're trying to keep the hype alive, but I'm already very excited to play it, so that's fine. And then one new um. Release that did look pretty interesting to me. What was it called? Something Ash. That, that was, was called Logan. We were talking Apparently about that. that wasn't so, new. So in terms of new things, it wasn't new. Off, uh, Sifu, the Kung Fu game, was the, was only, the only thing. Completely new title. I was curious because because Logan messaged me before the show and he's like, "We only saw two new things." I'm like, "I know Sifu was new. I'd never seen that, but I'm not sure about any of the other ones." And I looked it up. I hadn't heard of Solar, Solar Ash. Solar Ash was before originally this. announced in 2019. So. I don't know. Holy how crap! That's a long time got, ago. But it's it's been around. Yeah, no, I haven't... for over a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I thought it was one years. of the more interesting looking games out of all, this entire state of play. I think it looks pretty fluid. I like the concept of it being sent a black hole. 
I think it just looked generally fun compared to the, a lot of the other mm-hmm. stuff they showed. So I just wanted to mention that before we really get into Final Fantasy VII, which we'll probably talk about for a little while. Yeah, so. Solar Ash did look cool. Uh, I heard a lot of things that I wish Sonic Team would say about 3D Sonic games, about how it's about <laughs> fluidity and mobility, because I think that when you think about the philosophy of a 3D Sonic game, it, it used to just be about speed, right, in the boost to win era, and then... There wasn't a lot else there that was compelling besides just the speed. And I think that a game that really builds up a character's move set in terms of making you fast, but also making it feel good to move fast rather than Sonic Forces, where you just hold square and, and boost through to the end. <laughs> I think like all the stuff I heard there was what I want to hear from the next 3D Sonic game. And that, that has me interested in Solar Ash just because it did remind me of an ideal future for 3D Sonic, even if I don't think it's what we're going to get. And it looks like they actually build the levels around the speed without it just being one railroaded uh, pathway to the end, you mm-hmm. know, flying through this area with all these clouds. They showed the dragon off and platforming on that. It does it does look interesting. Nice art style, too. Yeah. Out of the games in here, I think it definitely stuck out. Um, mm-hmm. They show more Returnal. I mean, we hadn't seen... Was that... Have we seen much in terms of gameplay for that? Yeah, that game got its own little huge deep dive video like a month ago. <laughs> so it was kind of like, oh, we're seeing it again? Yeah. It makes it even worse. I didn't even realize they did that. I wasn't yeah, super I feel like uh, crazy. Heard a lot it was fun it, like, for what it is. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Just the the style of game. I feel like I've I've seen it before. A lot of the themes. I, I'm, you know, I'm sure they're going to do some new things with it. But a lot of the themes of like, oh, you die and you come back again. I mean, we had the same thing with <laughs> Death Loop. Like, it's... But and then and Sifu. as well. Sifu. And literally Sifu does that too. You when you die, yeah. you like wake up as an older, more skilled fighter. Oh. That's what that was? Yeah. I got confused. But even, even I was like, like this man is say, aging like, rapidly. That's just <laughs> I feel I feel like that's just been a lot of games recently. Roguelike games where it's like keep on going and doing it again. I feel like I've been seeing it everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I guess for me personally, that's some not a gameplay style that I'm super interested in. So that's mm-hmm. fine, but it does kind of blend in a little bit. Um, yeah. But for people who are excited for Returnal, that was in there. Yeah, not Akina, Bridge of Spirits. I know, Logan, you're, you're that. game looks that. amazing. Yeah, that one caught my eye back on the June PlayStation 5 showcase when they revealed everything. And a lot of these were actually just repeats from that, which was a <laughs> point I'm going to bring up after this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it looks so much like a Zelda game. If you forgot, this is a developed, it's a, it's a first time developer. Ember Lab has never made a game before. Previously, they made that uh, A Terrible Fate YouTube video, which has like millions and millions of views. And it's like a cinematic animated retelling of a lot of Majora's Mask story beats with with the mask and uh so it's they clearly love Zelda and I can see that in this game and I think it looks gorgeous I'm super excited to play it uh, on PS5 I actually didn't watch much of this trailer because I feel like I've seen enough and I'm ready to just go in blind the big disappointment for me was this isn't coming until August 24th when the story from June through December last year was It's coming out. uh, Well, it was supposed to come out in 2020. It was supposed to be a 2020 game in December, I think. And then it got pushed and like, you'll be playing it by March. And so I was like, are they going to drop it today? And then the August date showed up. And that was that was kind of a gut punch when I was expecting to play this thing within the next month. Uh, But I thought it looked absolutely gorgeous. The style just looks beautiful. It looks like like a Pixar movie within a game. I just I love how it looks. And the gameplay was one of my bigger concerns. And from what I did see in this trailer, it, it looked like she had some pretty cool combat moves, which which I'm excited to try out. But yeah, this one, it's it's a $40 title too, not a full 60 or 70, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I am a little concerned because it is a studio's first game. So maybe it will be a little rough gameplay wise, but I'm, I'm excited to see what obviously a team of Zelda fans was able to do on PS4 and PS5. Man, just looking at that, it is impressive that that's their first game. Mm -hmm. looks real good. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, Uh, visually it is is stunning. Uh, But other, Kano uh, Bridge of Spirits was one of the things in that June showcase. And so was Oddworld Soulstorm. Yep. And so was Returnal. And so was Deathloop. It was just a repeat. And I feel like we didn't learn substantial things about 
the games that were shown. Returnal, they did a little more of a gameplay deep dive, but like Deathloop was another cinematic trailer. Arcana was pretty much a cinematic trailer with some gameplay snippets. Uh, Oddworld, we learned some more about the gameplay. There was some VO about what you're actually going to be doing platforming wise, but it just felt like a rehash. And I'm like, why in a week, a week after a Nintendo direct a day before a Pokemon direct, why was now the time? I thought they were going to have mm-hmm. something more to say than what they did. Yeah. And I th- going back to thinking that Sony just doesn't have the, the format down as, as well as Nintendo does. I feel like those deep dives that they did really kind of make the show drag there's a t- there's a time and a place for those there really is mm-hmm. i feel like nintendo does a good job of that with the treehouse events that they do most notably with e3 where they show you the sizzle reel of all the stuff and all these trailers and then if you want to see more on the game then they've got the treehouse events later that show a deeper in-depth look at at some of the games that they mm-hmm. showed off but let's say you didn't care so much about maybe crash bandicoot or uh, odd world or something you're sitting there where, the, where they're talking about uh the concepts behind this game and what you're going to be doing for maybe five minutes and you're just yeah. kind of sitting there and then when there's not too much of a heavy hitter really at all in here it makes those minutes drag even longer no no shade to the games being shown off and talked about but i feel like those would be better suited for their own things after the show because if you just had if you just had a show with trailers without those deep dives, it probably would have been 10 minutes shorter. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, Nintendo did a really good job of it in the partner showcases too. I remember Kevin, you and I watched one together when they ended up showing off monster hunter rise for the first time. And they're like, Hey, we're going to have 15 more minutes on rise and stories after the rest right. of the direct. So it's like, if you care, stick around But if you don't, we're not going to make you sit through it. They actually did a similar thing in the most recent Direct with Bravely Default 2. They were like, hey, there's a new final extended trailer for Bravely Default right now on Twitter, on YouTube. Go check it out if you care. But they didn't sit there and play the whole four-minute thing for a game that we've already seen a ton of. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's just just about pacing and also announcements because they showed off uh, Knockout City, which was just in the Nintendo Direct last week. And just the games that were here, either we knew a lot about them already, or they weren't that enthralling, or we didn't learn anything significant new about them. So it just wasn't a very good presentation. No. Oh. Yeah. But we, get we, we should talk. Yeah, we should talk more about yeah. Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade. Cool. Great name. By Intergrade the way. rolls it's off only the gonna tongue. It's going to get worse because they're also doing a bunch of mobile games that tie in yeah. the stories, and it's yeah, it's going to be Kingdom Hearts mess. Good stuff. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's getting there. Which is, absolutely. I think on our spoiler cast, we talked about that's what we really didn't want to happen. Here it uh, is. It, it could happen. Uh, but Intergrade is coming on June 10th. It is a PlayStation 5 port of Final Fantasy VII Remake. It is going to have the standard stuff, 4K if you want it, or 60 FPS if you want it. They're adding a photo mode. Uh, they're adding a new difficulty level. They're adding some other quality of life improvements. But the big thing is they're adding a new story episode starring Yuffie from the original Final Fantasy VII. She does not appear in the remake. She comes into the story after you leave Midgar, which the remake part one does not touch upon. But this looks like a completely original story Uh unclear so far but to me it's like what was she up to during the events mm-hmm. of the remake is what the vibe i get from it it uh, like, looks yeah. like a new character also in there they had some cool combat where like i think his name is sonon i saw and he was sonon, like, flipping yeah. her around and he would like chuck her at enemies and she would attack them so um some new gameplay concepts there but i was pretty excited to see some new dlc coming to final fantasy 7 remake i did not expect that i thought they would just go heads down on part two but getting this little chapter in between, I think is going to be a nice appetizer for what's still to come. Yeah, and probably gives them a better reason to absolutely charge bucks for the uh, for the next gen version. Although, cool yeah. thing, I really didn't exactly. expect them to do this free upgrade for PS4 people. Now you have to pay extra mm-hmm. for the for the extra story content that's going to be coming along the way. Yeah. But in terms of just mm-hmm. getting your version to the PS5 version, that's free, which is real cool. Mm-hmm. And as of now, and they did it doesn't show seem like off... the DLC is on PS4. I'm not. A hundred percent sure if that's uh, the case. Okay, yeah. But it seems like a PS5. That's what it's looking like right now. Yeah, 
were yeah. gonna say that? Well, we'll probably I was going to say more. that they did show off a lot of the uh, the PS5 versus PS4 comparison graphics and the added textures and just the 60 frames. It all looks very good. So that free upgrade is definitely going to be worth it if you do decide to bring it over to your next generation console. Yeah, I think so too. And here, a tip, if you don't own it and you want to play it on PS5, go buy the PS4 version right now because it's, it's like right? 30 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of the seventy dollars for the uh, for the next gen mm-hmm. version, yeah, which is yeah seventy bucks. I I thought that PS4 games going to PS5 were going to remain sixty. Like Hitman Three is a, a cross gen game and it's sixty. A lot of cross gen games are still sixty. So I was a little shocked to see that this upgraded version was was going to run seventy. I feel like it is that out. extra content that made them think, okay, this will be fine. Mm-hmm. We've got mm-hmm. new story content in here that is specific to the PS5 version. It was coming to the PS4 version, which I'm pretty sure it's not. I mm-hmm. feel like they may not have been able to get away with it as easily, but if it's new content that's only available there, I feel like people will be uh, more receptive to the 70 bucks Or the $90 yeah. if you're getting the digital deluxe version or whatever. $90. Yeah, but I'm, I'm excited about this. Uh, I think that the thing that's less exciting is that there are a couple of mobile games. One of them is going to be a Final Fantasy VII Battle Royale, and one of them is going to be a retelling of the entire anthology of Final Fantasy VII, the original, the uh, companion games like Dirge of Cerberus, and even the movie Advent Children is going to be playable in video game form. And it's a monthly chapter episodic thing on mobile really really weird what do you guys think yes i'm honestly not that opposed to it it is more of a traditional remake for a game like that it plays exactly the same it's just updated graphics wise to fit mobile you know 3d character models with slightly more detailed backgrounds but the thing about it is is that i don't know how much it's going to cost but you know, having it in bite-sized pieces going through this entire anthology doesn't seem like that big of a deal to me. It's something that tra- like more traditional Final Fantasy VII fans can get behind um, if they're not super feeling the remake. Um, and it, the fact that it turns makes a video game version of previously like the movie Advent Children is bringing that and is combining the whole anthology of the entire story. I think that's pretty cool to have the entire collection of all the story in one place. You know, I, I like when they do that, especially when it gets so convoluted, like these Square Enix games tend to get. Um, I, I think I'm personally going to check it out. And I they're also bringing Dirge of Cerberus, which was like a PS2 spinoff focusing on one of the side characters. It's just, it's a lot. And Jam Pack Crisis Core, and, which is a pretty pricey PSP game. And no, it's not. Yeah, I, I think it's one of, yeah. one of the more popular PSP games in general. Um, so it's very exciting that I think they're all coming into one place. I didn't think it looked too terrible. I don't know how it's going to play. Um, I didn't super look into it, but, and you, y- you would think it's a lot of content to be released episodically. I'm not sure how that's going to pan out if they're just going to yeah. do episode one, final fantasy seven, episode two crisis. I don't know how it's going to go or episode one, the first 10th of final fantasy. And then it goes to, for like five years. I don't know. Um, you do it, make more money, but Keep people playing for the exactly. Longer. And it's like 10 bucks a pop. Like, oh, that'd be terrible. But but that's mobile. You will see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll see. Like, um, I think the idea is very interesting to try and tie all these games back together. I mean, who in the world, like, besides super dedicated fans can keep up with all the spinoffs and stuff. I think it's a cool idea yeah. to have it all in one place. But the fact that it's on mobile makes me have absolutely no interest in it. I, I just, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I have absolutely no interest in mobile gaming whatsoever. And so all of this stuff to me mm. is just stuff that I'm never going to play. Yeah. And that, what if they brought it to switch? I give it a, I give I it would, a look. I, I mean, would like a that. lot of the older uh, traditional JRPGs that get ported over, I feel like are the mobile versions and then they bring them mm-hmm. over. So mm-hmm. I can see it coming to, uh, to like switch and something. If it's once, once it's all done, once they have all the updates out and then I maybe give it a look, but yeah, I just, I just don't have any interest in playing games on mobile, specifically a game like that. I feel like the most I'd go for on mobile is some sort of puzzle game to just like eat eat time away. I don't know. Yeah. That's just me personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they also released the what the Final Fantasy 15 Pocket Edition, which was for mobile. They, that came to Switch, so I could see it coming to Switch eventually, and I think that would be a really good place to play it. Um, 
but I also just wonder how long this thing is is going to take to all come out. I, I didn't think the game looked yeah. too bad for a mobile game. It has really cool new character portraits, like for the dialogue. Like they almost look mm-hmm. like Fire Emblem quality and art style, like when the characters are talking and you see their art on screen. So that's really nice. But yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to dive into this, but I think it's cool that they are expanding this universe. They're, they're really capitalizing on Final Fantasy VII. The Battle Royale is weird. I, I don't know how I feel about that one. Uh, but I think this one is definitely the cooler of the two mobile announcements. But yeah, Final Fantasy VII coming back just over a year after. Just it was excited for more. Yeah, I'm, I <laughs> yeah. am excited to jump into the DLC. And Zach and I were. This talking is all coming out in June. Stuff. Yeah, June. June yeah, no, I, w- I would like to go back, but coming out in June, not a long, not a long wait. So mm-hmm. that's always good, but. Still want to still want to hear more about the sequel to the remake, you know? Yeah. Yeah, which is probably a couple years off. Wonder if this DLC pushes that back any further. A little worried about that. I mean, it dep- yeah. I guess it depends on how meaty it is. We don't know how, how big this experience mm-hmm. is going to be, and we also don't know the price tag of it on mm-hmm. uh, the four PS4 owners, which would probably give a decent idea of how, how meaty it is. So I guess we'll have to wait and see on that. I'm going to chuck a guess out there i'm gonna say it's gonna be five to six hours and it's gonna be 20 bucks it's probably a pretty decent bet that's 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 about where i see it landing but it'll be a lot of fun and we will definitely talk about it uh in the coming months in june when it comes out we'll jump into that let's move on though uh, last week we talked about or maybe it was a couple weeks ago now we talked about the future of anthem was being decided by bioware and the news is out. Anthem Next has officially been canceled. They are diverting those resources to work on Dragon Age and Mass Effect. So they had these ambitious plans to kind of reboot Anthem in the way that we saw No Man's Sky turn itself around. A number of other games do it. We talked about maybe it was the right time to pull the plug on Anthem because it might not have a place in that space anymore because there's so many games like it. Now that it's officially happened, Kev, do you feel like this was the right call? Yeah, I think overall it was it was the right decision. When you've got uh, when you've got mass the next Mass Effect game coming down in the pipeline, and you've got the next Dragon Age game, it makes all the sense in the world to di- divert all of your resources to those. If you take a look at like No Man's Sky, that was all that studio had at that point, and I feel like it was in their yeah. best interest to try and do good on that and try to bring that thing back. Mm-hmm. But when you have two other extremely high-profile projects that you're working on after two high-profile failures, I feel like it's it's a much smarter idea to just move on from Anthem, just forget that happened, and then move on to these next games and make sure these hit, because these are very important games for Bioware. But I do also see the side of it that it just sucks that this game came out. People had high hopes for it, and it just wasn't what people wanted. And then they promise all of these things. That's why you always got to be wary about the roadmaps that some companies put out when their game comes out. There's no guarantee that that stuff's ever going to come out. And for Anthem, nothing came out. And I think that's what really sucks is that they had all these plans for it. And besides some bug fixes when it first came out, none of that other content ever made it in there. Yeah, it is disappointing because I think that I think that Anthem did have potential if they were able to go in there and fix it. I think that at its core, some people did really enjoy the gameplay loop of it and there were things to like, but it just never got that push to get where it needed to be to be successful, which is a shame that it's just one of these projects that's going to be lost. But I completely understand the decision. I think that after two failures, two big misses, bioware it needs a win and the mass effect trilogy is looking like a win but those are three games that already existed so i think that for their next new game it's got to be a hit especially because the trilogy is probably going to sell extremely well and have people hungry for whatever's coming next from them either mass effect or dragon age wise so yeah i think it was was the right decision even though it's disappointing i'm sure for people working on it and fans who are looking forward to this update Zach, any thoughts? Absolutely agree. I think it was the right call. Anything to divert more resources into more Mass Effect, which is a game series I plan on loving. Yeah. Yeah. I ho- also hopefully plan they'll on give loving my words. One with, day. Uh, with Mass Effect 4. <laughs> and did you guys hear 
about dr- the Dragon Age news that kind of came out aside to this. It got overshadowed a little bit by the Anthem news. But Dragon Age, the, the next one that they announced and are working on, was going to I apparently be a, yeah. a live service game, m- massive multiplayer like Anthem. And after seeing the failure of Anthem and actually the success of another EA published title, not developed by BioWare, developed by Respawn, but Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which had no substantial DLC, no multiplayer whatsoever, no big roadmap. It was just, hey, here's a phenomenal Star Wars campaign. After seeing the success of that, they are pivoting the new Dragon Age to be more like that. And that's the right move. I didn't oh think it, it didn't cross my mind that the Dragon Age wasn't going to be a massive single player RPG. I thought that's what it was going to be. So I thought it was reassuring news to hear that that is the direction that they've chosen to go in. Two thoughts. Uh, first, I guess something good did come out of Anthem that in its high profile yeah. <laughs> failure, they decided not uh-huh. to completely screw up a, a game in another series. And also it's one thing to make an entirely new IP like Anthem and have it be massively multiplayer and it fails, whatever. But to have Dragon Age, which is single player, that's that's the way it's been, and to completely pivot to some to something completely different, I don't feel would have sat very well with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So good on them for changing that. Yeah, yeah I hope that their plans for the Mass Effect Ooh. weren't also some <laughs> big live service. The Mass thing. Effect move gung ho with the uh, MMO style. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I think it's it's a really crucial period we're entering for BioWare. We'll have to see how these games shake out probably much later down the line in this console generation. We're going to move on, though. Sony, before their state of play this week, gave kind of a weird tease of VR on PS5. They tweeted, we're announcing the future of VR on PlayStation. And then it was like, it's coming! <laughs> and not much else. A higher resolution wider field of view, single cable setup, and new controllers to replace the now two-generation-old PlayStation Move controllers, which is wild. So I think that's kind of what everyone wanted. I think some were probably hoping for a hand or a cordless-free headset like the Oculus Quest is, but single cord is a lot easier. Zach, you have seen firsthand the, the octopus of cords it is to hook up the PSVR right now. Yeah, that thing was a crazy jumble. And the fact that you can't see while you're attached to it just presents a big danger of tripping over a bunch of cables or just Mm -hmm. swinging your arm and just taking it out, especially with the PlayStation Move controllers. Most of what we played just used the standard DualShock. But yeah, I think it could get pretty limiting at times. But now that single cord, um, probably a lot easier to manage. I think wireless is probably the best way to go about it. But as of right now, if that's what they can do, that's what they can do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think that the biggest win here is the single cord setup because right now you have that you have to have that processor box also that gives the PlayStation mm-hmm. Four enough power to power the, the VR. Middleman. Yeah, it is. It's a total middleman. Yep. It's a supplementary power source, and I'm looking forward to just having probably what like a USB cable, just boop, and your VR headset is on. That is a huge change. I can't even use my VR on my PS5 right now, as I've talked about. So Wait, are you I think on that dongle thing? it has not showed up. What? It is still they not shipped here. They that thing forever ago, didn't they? In September. They shipped it five months ago. Wait, no, sorry. There's I no ordered it in September. in September. I ordered it in September. They shipped it in early December, and it is still not here. Man, they use in the snailest of nails. <laughs> Holy yeah. Holy crap, maybe an actual... And now I'm story. moving soon, Got so stolen. I don't want to reach out and ask for a new one, because then I'm worried it'll get here when I'm already gone. So I'm basically waiting until my move is done, and then I'm going to figure out how to Jeez. how to be able to play my VR. But Kev, what do you think of, of these little teases we got of VR on PS5? Just, <laughs> there really, yeah, it really wasn't a whole lot in there. Just basically like, hey, we still got VR plans for, uh, for PlayStation 5, and... Just making sure people know that it's not coming out this year, but it's good that that they're talking about it at all and knowing that that's going to be on the horizon sometime soon and to to expect that we'll probably hear more about it uh, probably closer to the end of this year if it comes out next year. Probably start seeing more things about it and start to see more VR projects. So it's a thing to look forward to. 
yeah, if we see if like I think we could see Sony release like new hardware every two years at this point, see like a VR in 2022 and then a slim model in 2023 or 2024 of the PS5. I could I could see them going down that path. This could be their next big hardware thing, which is cool. So, uh, yeah, we just know it's not coming this year. I'm curious to learn more. I assume it will be backwards compatible with all current PSVR games, which would be a big deal because so. Astrobot and higher resolution and a wider field of view would be just amazing to play. So I'm really hoping that it is backwards compatible. I don't Lee, see that's your top be. VR game. You can't think of any <laughs> other VR game you would rather play. I can't, I can't think of okay, just, more just... Than Astrobot. Yeah. We got uh, one last piece of Sony news here. It's their free game initiatives coming back. Last year, if you remember, in April, they gave away Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection, uh, for free. And Journey also was free. And it's coming back for the next few months, starting in March, running through June. And the first game is Ratchet and Clank, which was already a PS Plus game at one point, I believe. And it's also available in the PS5 PS Plus collection, if anyone missed that, who now has a PS5. So there has been a chance to get this for free, but... This is a no strings attached permanent add to the library. It doesn't get taken away if you don't subscribe anymore. So it's cool to see this coming back. I think it's a cool promotion. And obviously it's marketing for Rift Apart, which is coming out in a few months. Now, is there a way to like, because I already claimed the PS Plus version. Is there a way to claim this one that's not tied to PS Plus? Update it. Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, we'll have to look into that because so. if it's locked behind it. PS Plus and we don't have the option, yeah. yeah. I'd much rather have the one that's not tied to PS Plus than the one that is. Mm-hmm. But, Absolutely. So I'll be checking that out next month. Yeah. And then, uh, Kevin, you, you added here that Stardew Valley is getting a board game. You want to tell us about that? Yeah, so it was just a video that popped up a couple of days ago uh, when uh, when Eric Barone was talking about other projects – in the Stardew universe, I, I don't know if I was really expecting a board game version of Stardew Valley to come out, um, but it's been announced uh, for 55 bucks. and just taking, like, taking a look at some of the components of the game, uh, it, of course, is heavy inspiration from the actual game. You've got uh, villagers to woo, you've got crops to grow, uh, the goal of the board game is to get enough bundles, finish off uh, the starting bundles. I haven't taken a look completely through the uh the rule list but there is a pdf of the rules online if you want to peruse through but it definitely looks like it evokes a ton of the spirit of the uh of the original game and uh a quote from from eric barome was that he wanted it to evoke the kind of long nature of stardew valley so he wanted it to be easy to learn but very uh, very complex as you get further into it and from what i'm seeing there is a lot of things that point to that. You've got also like buildings, you've got the mine to go and do it. It, it seems pretty expansive for a board game. So uh, only shipping to the U S right now. So I'm not going to get to play it for a while, uh, but it's something that I want to <laughs> keep my eye on. I think it was, I think it sold out really quick, but they're going to try and do another printing of it. Uh, but really cool. And it seems like Stardew Valley can translate to a board game pretty well. Nice. Yeah. That's, that is a pretty cool game to get a board game adaptation. I think that's pretty neat. Yeah, so I hope when it comes out, people play it, and it's fun to play. Yeah, and then uh, last piece of news here. This one we're going to spend just a few seconds on because we're recording late Thursday night, and there's a Pokemon announcement early Friday morning, so we're just missing this. We don't know what it's going to be. Let's make some last-minute predictions here so we can revisit and see if we are right a week. Let's go, Johto. Let's go, Johto. Let's go, Johto. And they will ultimately disappoint me. Yes. Are they going to be Let's Go remakes? Of Diamond and Pearl? I don't think so. I think... Okay. Uh, yeah. If they're going to do Let's Go, it'll be Gen 2. Okay. I'm what were the leaked Let's names? Gen what 4. were the leaked names for the Gen 4? Like Shiny Pearl? Or no, we came up like with that. names. Yeah. Oh, we, I feel like there were leaked... I feel like I saw leaked names I don't somewhere. Know. I want it to be, what, Radiant Diamond and Shining Pearl or something like that? You got Shiny yeah. Je- Diamond hope and it's Joseph St. Cloud. The two greatest games of all time. Uh, Star yeah. of the it, Diamond it, and Pearl remakes. I think remakes. it's going to be uh, Let's Go Gen 2 or remakes of Gen 4 plus Pokemon Snap stuff. Mm-hmm. But you'll, when, when this episode Just a bunch of apps. Up, and Pokemon know. Unite. Pokemon Unite, yeah. probably the MOBA that they announced. Pokemon Sleep, which has been absent for quite a while. <laughs> sleep. Pokemon Sleep. Yeah. 
We'll see. Uh, a weird thing that I saw someone note is that Nintendo actually never retweeted this announcement. So maybe it's not a really Switch focused thing. Maybe it's more mobile, which is like not great. Uh, but that'd be pretty gross. Curious to see what it is. But so Zach is saying, let's go, Johto. Kevin is saying a standard remake of Gen 4. And I am saying, let's go, Gen 4. So we all. Wow. Okay. Uh, we're all kind of slightly different. We're in that, and it's we're just in that going area. to be a 40 minute uh, Pokemon Unite video. <laughs> deep dive we'll see about that yeah, i would love to see explorers of time explorers of darkness mystery dungeon remakes in the style of the ones they just did I that would that, uh those uh, the other remakes sold sold it sold a couple million uh i would love a ranger remake not bad yeah absolutely great. love it screw but up your i would uh, love Switch to see screen. mystery dungeon continue. <laughs> just spin on the screen yeah <laughs> yeah anyways uh zach that is it for news this week all right. Well, now that we're done with news, I guess we have to talk about the games we've been playing. And I guess I should start since last week. I finished off the show by saying that I would have beaten two games by this go? week. Red Dead. I beat Red Dead. It was great. <laughs> right at the end. Just kidding. I haven't even started it. Haven't touched it. Haven't even looked at it. I haven't beaten two games, but I did beat one game, which is almost two games. And the one game I did beat, no one will probably see coming because I didn't even anticipate playing it. It was the first Hitman game, the remake from 2016. Finally getting into it off of recommendation from Logan, who recently picked up Hitman 3. So he's been talking about it a lot. So in the back of my mind, I'm like, I love stealth games. Time to play some Hitman. And I was perusing my collection of PS Plus games, as I tend to do occasionally, and realized that at some point, the first Hitman game was free on PS Plus, hmm. and that I picked it up and didn't realize it, which I... I think I've done a lot with a bunch of different games. It's a lot of but Plus games. There are a lot, two every month. Um, so I downloaded it, decided to just plow through it. Took me two sessions. Uh, these Hitman games, the remakes, they're all episodic. They have about six episodes apiece. Um, the first one, each episode, uh, different level, took about hour and a half each. So came in around nine to ten hours, I think, which is. The average was around 10 to 11 hours. Um, so overall, I actually very much enjoyed this game. Um, I think as a sandbox stealth game, it stands out. I think a lot of the level designs were really good. There was only like one level that I wasn't a huge fan of level design wise. Um, and the structure of you usually get two assassinations per level. And then this one specific level had two assassinations and then like a task. And the task was very annoying. So that level, not great, but most of the levels very beautiful and they all were very unique and stood out in not only the ways that you could perform these assassinations, but just the structure of the levels. There's a lot of layers and, you know, the options are very good. And for someone who is more into exploring and finding their own path of doing things, it is good in that. But if you need more of a structure, it actually gives you a list of some of the more story oriented assassinations you can take and you can actually um waypoint the first option of every quest so if you need a, like help on every path it can send you in that direction so that's very good for people who don't want to just walk around until they accidentally start a quest or overhear a conversation or something like that i tried to do that for most of the levels i didn't want to you know, just set a waypoint and follow that path. I wanted to discover my own things because I thought that was a more entertaining way of doing it is actually stumbling across these different paths and different ways to go about it. So, um, and I tried to do story assassinations for every every yeah. character because those are fun. It's not fun to just run to the guy, shoot him in the head and run to the exit, yeah. which I assume would be very difficult to do given the amount of guards on every level. But I've seen people do it on the internet. So, so game in you itself. never know. Exactly. It's just a race against against a thousand guards trying to kill you. So um, the story, the way it was laid out, since it's episodic, you would get one level and one small cutscene, And it was that for the entire game. I didn't really care about the story. Um, th they rebooted the series. So it's, I think I don't think it's connected at all to the PS2 games, which I played a bit of in my younger days. Um, don't remember any of the story. Uh, Pretty standard, you know, he's an assassin. He works for an assassination company. They're feuding with another assassination company. And now there's assassins. I don't know. It doesn't matter. 
but yeah, uh, skip it. That's not what's good. Skip it. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a very fun stealth based game, and stealthy sandboxes are so good when you get the options. Just go about it. So overall, really enjoyed it. Definitely want to move on. Um, Hitman Two is currently on sale, so I might just pick it up for eighteen bucks. Um, the thing about it, Hitman, it's weird because if you just buy Hitman Three, you can play levels of the first two games in that engine but i already had hitman one i don't know there's a lot of backwards compatibility with these games it's confusing um yeah i think i might just go through them as they came out you know play hitman one in the style of hitman one hitman two in the style of hitman two i think logan's just gonna play them all in the style of hitman three which um slightly better experience right now (laughs) yeah (laughs) logan is still stuck on the level yeah and he wants my help um i do I don't know, I'm not much of a teacher in terms of video games, but you never know. I may be able to guide him through it. Um, and then other than that, uh, played a lot more Final Fantasy. Didn't get as close to beating it as I wanted to. That was my other game that I was planning on beating. It did not pan out. I was also going to like try and beat a smaller game, um, but it just didn't work out. So I come to you as a failure, which is fine. <laughs> I can live with that. Uh, Final Fantasy is still very good. I think I'm on like disc the end of disc two in terms of ps1 it got divided all those games got divided up into discs because they're so so big for such a such a small console but still enjoying that not a lot whole new to talk about that and then in terms of multi have we talked about gta yet no okay we should probably talk about gta 5 yeah played something we played in a while yeah so we all together we got together and we played gta 5 online together at my behest it was my idea because the game was on sale and i bought it and i was in the mood to play gta 5 online multiplayer for whatever reason so Mm -hmm. what were your guys's experiences good bad i know i did a lot of winning that's whatever just what do you guys think about the game logan did you ever you didn't i mean because your first experience with gta 5 was recently playing with zach so you never played the the online mode I've never played GTA 5 until last year where I played like eight hours of the campaign and then online with you guys last week. Which that was it. It was fun. Yeah, it was a good time. I can see uh, like sinking just tons of hours in yep. with friends. Uh, I can definitely see that. I like the variety of stuff to do. The, I like just doing the missions. Just missions the, are fun. Uh, I think it's what we started out as just stealing cars and, and doing the missions were a lot of fun. The racing was cool two laps was really long That's for the some of these we had <laughs> ones i mean generally yeah. i feel like some of the, some of those the laps are like two three minutes and that's fine but man those stunt ones were the laps were a little bit longer yeah, <laughs> yeah but it was a lot of fun and then of course just messing around in that world with other people was a good time yeah uh we had to create a, another crew and i had a previous crew from when i played on the 360 so it showed me like my old stats from back then, I'm like, dude, it's like you played yep. for seven days and 20 hours. I'm like, I, <laughs> man, I played GT Online a lot. And that's not even counting all the time that I spent on the story mode of uh, mm-hmm. GTA 5. Bring it back all the memories, whether you're doing the missions, whether you're doing the races, or whether you're just like farting around in the in the open world. It's a ton of fun. Um, and just finding new stuff to do. If you're going up to the top of Mount Chiliad trying to do that, and then you just get distracted because all the cops trying to kill you and then new stuff happens. I feel like you're... Plans Zach and I faced but... off in a one-on-one duel. Yeah. For like yes. An hour. So there's this death match <laughs> option, which is just like first to five kills wins. And then Logan thought he could challenge me and get away with it. And I just wiped the absolute floor with him and he was embarrassed. So we had to stop playing afterwards, but I thought it was a that really good time. What happened? <laughs> That's, how Zach's do you remember it? Advantages after dropping 800 hours into GTA five. It was the last okay. Week. It was it was a little in my favor because I killed him one. We were fighting on the side of a mountain and I killed him. I went up 2-0 for the right. Yeah. So Logan was up 2-0 and I was like, I got to take this seriously. So I (laughs) I got a kill on him. And then he spawned at the bottom of the hill and I had a sniper rifle. So before he could even get remotely close to me, I would just take him out. I was like. It was a sweep after that. The tides turned um, based on my respawn point after my the first high attack. ground is very uh-huh. important, which we all know. Thanks to I thought it was a very fun Avengers time. Of- exactly. Uh, yeah, so I thought it was a, g- a great time. Yeah, it was fun. So don't regret the purchase. Bought it on sale for like fifteen it's bucks. It's always on sale. <laughs> yeah. That's why like two um, million people own that game. 
Mm-hmm. Exactly. So it, it is nice because it's kind of since they're so deep into the multiplayer and there's so much to dive into that once you buy the ultimate edition, it starts you off with a lot of cash and a lot of options and a lot of free stuff. So that's always nice when it doesn't restrict you when everyone else is so high leveled and has so much stuff. Yeah. Last thing on GTA five before I move on just now going in, despite all the grievances I have with all the monetization of the extra content, at the very least, it seems like there's, at this point, a ton that you can do in terms of the extra missions that they've added and some like story mm-hmm. content too. So, uh, despite the crazy monetization, I, I do appreciate uh, a lot of the extra missions and things that they put in there. Yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, Logan, what have you been up to this week? And then one other. Oh, you haven't played another game. Uh, one other brief thing. Moving into Logan. Earlier tonight, we tried to play Divinity: Original Sin Two, a game that we have tried played to. for nearly 20 hours um and we had a network connectivity issue where logan couldn't invite me to our world um he did some online research found out that this just happens i think it happened almost exactly one year ago and the servers were Mm -hmm. just down for a day before i think they fixed them so we're hoping to (laughs) it'll work um soon they better fix Uh, it i really (laughs) if they don't fix it i'll be devastated because we have put a lot Mm -hmm. of time effort into this world um so a little worried about that if anyone from divinity or larian studios is listening get on (laughs) that get on it so um instead of playing divinity we bought ultimate marvel versus capcom 3 for ten dollars on on sale which is a ps3 game that got brought to ps4 in 2016 i've never played a marvel versus capcom it plays like a street fighter game it's very jumpy um, I love the comic book art style. Um, a good cast of characters. It starts you off with all the characters, and apparently some of the previously paid for characters on the PS3 just yeah, come with the, the game DLC now. Yeah, all the DLC characters were in it. Yeah. That's cool. So I thought it was a, a good time. We didn't play a lot of it. Um, we just dove in to check it out because Logan Wright. had some. Oh, Logan had some good memories. Yeah. He loves Phoenix Wright. <laughs> <laughs> Only fighting game yeah. Phoenix Wright will ever be in. Oh, so, devastating. Yeah, just just a little bit of that. So that was a good time. But yeah, Logan, what else have you been up to this week? So I've been in a, a bit of one of my ruts lately. Just nothing has sounded that intriguing to me. And uh, after Splatoon 3, I've actually gone back and been playing a lot of Splatoon 2, which has been a lot of fun. I've been playing the single player campaign. I've never finished that one. And uh, I, I finished the expansion. I finished Splatoon 1's campaign, but never 2. And it's good. I really like how it forces you to use different weapons. It does. It's really good in its level design and how it every level is tailored to whatever weapon it makes you use. And it just exploits all the different ways that you can use every weapon in the game. That's just, it's really cool. So yeah. And I, I've been thinking about it, that Splatoon uh, Octo expansion is better than Splatoon two single player, which is better than Splatoon one single player. So they get better every time, which makes me really excited for whatever single player yeah. content is coming in Splatoon three. So yeah, that's, that's been a good time. And then the other thing I've been playing is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, all just fueled by the Nintendo Direct. After they announced Skyward Sword, I'm like, well, that's an underwhelming announcement. <laughs> so I dove back into Breath of the Wild because I never finished the Champions Ballad, which is the second season of DLC they released, the second wave. And I'm almost done with it. I'm having a good time. I have been away from that game for long enough where a lot of it feels really fresh to get back into. And there is there are some corners of the world I never actually ended up making it to uh, because it's an enormous map. So going back to that has been a lot of fun. Also getting me hyped for both Age of Calamity DLC and for Breath of the Wild 2. And I'm excited to get the motorcycle because then I think I'll just keep playing once I get the motorcycle and can around. buzz around Hyrule yeah. and that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I just I think it's so cool. I'm trying to get more creative with the combat because at a base level, it's mostly a one button system. But when you see what some of the people on like YouTube do in the Breath of the Wild combat system, it's it's unbelievable how they exploit the engine to its max. Um, so I've been trying to get more creative with what I'm doing, trying to like pit enemies against each other or use the environment to my advantage. And it's it's really fun to to mess with that combat system. So yeah, I'm having a good time with it. Nice. All right. Uh, as for me, more Super Mario 3D World. Still having a good time with it. Played some multiplayer with some friends. And, man, for <laughs> playing it with people who don't know Mario too well is a, is a, a bit of a mess because we're all just, like, running around and, like, accidentally killing each other. And, like, 
mm-hmm. doing all this stuff and trying to coordinate to get uh, the stars and everything was a mess. But in its own way, it was it was a good time. And playing it single player has still been fun too. Depth perception can be a little bit weird sometimes. I've had some deaths and some uh, hits on blocks where I didn't didn't know exactly where I was, but that's fine. And I've really liked some of the levels. I got to one of the more recent ones I played was with the um, with the blocks, the shift between the blue and the red color, and it's set to the beat. Mm-hmm. I think that was the first yeah. level that I got to. I'm like, okay, this is this is actually really cool. Like oh, the levels have been great, but uh, that was the first one. We're like, all right, now they're starting to get really creative with the levels, and it's getting me more excited for um for some of the levels that come in later. Um, but it's been good having a, having a good time both. Uh, the multiplayer that I've played with some friends and single player as well. We'll get to that multiplayer eventually. Two Tentatively, weeks. Uh, yeah, another another week here <laughs> and the, uh, another two weeks, and we'll be we'll be playing it. Finally, have those thoughts. Yeah. Uh, and then last up, I started Sakuna. Finally, took uh, took me. You've been talking about that forever to get to it. Uh, still haven't gotten super far into it, uh, but booted that up and put about an hour and a half in. Do really like the art style. Uh, and the setting of the world, uh, going to this Isle of Demons and just having this quaint Japanese house on the top of a mountain and having to like jump off to go into the valley below and and explore all of these areas. Uh, it, it's really br- pretty. And uh, last thing I'll say, because I haven't played too much of it, the uh, pe- people weren't lying when they were saying that uh, that the the rice farming is is quite in depth on how it works. Like. They were just like, here's some here's some seeds. Go and plant it in the water. I'm like, all right. They didn't tell me how to do this. I'm just going to go plant it. And I planted them all in. And it's like, you planted those too far apart. And I'm like, okay. And then I look in later and it's got like this whole data sheet of, of the stats of the rice and all this stuff. And I'm sure it's only going to get more complex from here. Uh, some of the other systems, uh, it hasn't gotten bad yet, but I could see it being um, a little bit unforgiving. Like, for example, you you go and gather like food and stuff and your food can spoil. So you kind of have to like use it quickly in the cooking that you do at the end of each day. Um, But I am excited to see where it goes with the, with the rice farming because I haven't even finished growing one set of, of rice yet. I'm still very early on, but from what people have been saying about it, where people have like basically learned the, all the intricacies of how to actually make rice in real life, I'm excited to uh, to dive into just how in depth the the rice growing mm-hmm. system is. Um, but just from the few hours that I've played, uh, the world is pretty. The rice uh, the rice farming looks super cool, and uh, the combat has been interesting. And I'm looking forward to unlocking more uh, more fighting styles and and uh, abilities in the combat system to explore more. Yeah, awesome. So, Glad you finally started it. I, I've yeah, been talking about it for a while. Yeah. I've had it on my shelf for a while. I was just busy mm-hmm. with Yakuza and Spirit Fair, and then Mario came out. Uh, but I'm 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 into it now uh, with Mario. Mm-hmm. It's going to be my game that I'm playing for a while. All right, awesome. We're gonna have an O2 this week. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like it's uh it's been a little got while. what that's uh, like. Maybe we, we wouldn't have done it if uh if the state of play had a lot more going on. Yeah, here, for but, sure. Uh, uh, but we have time for it, which is great. So in honor of, we've got the Nintendo Direct, State of Play was meh, but you also got the Pokemon thing coming up too. In the honor of just all these new games possibly being announced, uh, we thought we'd take a look back at our own most anticipated games of all time. So each of us has a list of five games, top five most anticipated games. We're just going to run through all of them. One person will run through their five uh, I'm going to throw it to Zach first. Zach, oh. what are your top five most anticipated games of all time? All right. I don't have my list in front of me, but I remember it. So don't worry about it. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> first one I want to talk about is probably uh, the the only remake on my list, which is the Shadow of Colossus remake. This got announced at, I believe, PSX 2017, mm-hmm. something like that. Um, absolutely floored when I saw it. I did not see it coming at all. Very excited. Um, the wait wasn't particularly long, which is nice because it came out in February of 2018. Um, so not a huge wait on that one. But nonetheless, um, having one of my favorite games of all time being remade into such a beautiful remake for the current gen at the time. Absolutely loved it. Um, and then after that, we've got Last of Us Part 2. Um, played The Last of Us Part 1 uh, almost immediately after it came out in 2020. 12, 2013, 
2013. Um, so played it in 2013, had to wait seven years. I don't even remember when they first announced the second game. It was what, 2017? That was Maybe. a go to PSX, right? PSX I think so. so. like December of PSX. 2016, yeah. I think. And then there were just long bouts of nothing, like cinematic trailer, nothing, cinematic trailer, nothing. And then delay, delay, delay. It was a rough time. But we eventually got there, and it was worth it. What a fantastic game. And then after that, we have uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. This is in no particular order, by the way. This is just as I remember them. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 3. Kingdom Hearts 3 was a game that it's hard to say that I had to wait 15 years for this game because there was so much crap in between Kingdom Hearts 2 and Kingdom Hearts 3. But, you know, having to wait so long for a mainline game, I feel like this was everyone's most anticipated game for a very long time. And being such a huge fan of the franchise for so long, it was also almost always near the top of my list of most anticipated game that I wanted to happen. And when it finally got announced... I was super excited. Day one purchase. Liked it at the time. You know, I've still got mixed feelings on the game. It was a fun experience, but story-wise, it was a big disappointment for such a long wait um, and having to play all this crap in between of 3DS games, if a mobile game, which I didn't play, but the basically there's crazy. It's crazy how much stuff you have to play to understand this story. I don't even want to get into it. But nonetheless, the wait for Kingdom Hearts 3 was arduous um and not particularly worth it compared to a lot of the other stuff on this list <laughs> um and then next up we have i know wow god I, I remember one of them on my list okay i'll just talk about this one because i remember this one uncharted 4 is on my list obviously i played uncharted 3 as uh i played the first two and then uncharted 3 came out very shortly after that in november of 2011 and then i had up with the franchise and i was like well i played all of these in the span of less than a year um hopefully they make another one and then eventually they announced it and same thing you know bits of information gameplay here long wait it was a five-year wait we had, came out in may of 2016 after delay um so similar to the last of us but Seems being to be a pattern here with naughty dog <laughs> exactly exactly yep mm -hmm. you know uh, the long wait, absolutely worth it. Now my new favorite game of all time. So I would have waited however long for that game. And who remembers the Dishonored last game two. on my list? Because I don't. I've got the list. Up. Dishonored oh, Dishonored 2. two. Perfect. Yes. So Dishonored 2 um, came out same year as Uncharted uh, 4. Yeah, I think it came out in November of 2016. And the original game, I think, was like, which was all over the place because it also came out on PS4. I think it was like a 2013, 20. 2013 ish game um played it shortly after it came out played it a thousand times it's one of my most played games ever um because i just love the world so much in the gameplay and stuff like that so the anticipation for a second game especially in such a lore heavy series it was it was very very long wait um even though it was, God, was it only three years? I feel like it was longer than that. Maybe it came out in 2011. It came out on PS3, so 2011 would make sense. 2011. Let's go with that. I don't <laughs> know. Good. It was a long wait. It felt very long. Dishonored 2 was a fantastic game. Um, played similar. Expanded on the story. Uh, they built the engine from the ground up to introduce a bunch of new mechanics. Uh, looks Looked so very good. So definitely excited to play Deathloop. Um, because it's got pretty much the exact same engine. But the Wait for Dishonored 2, also very worth it. So overall, my list of games, for the most part, very worth the wait. Um, but they were all very long waits, except for Shadow of the Colossus. Um, but overall, I liked my list a lot. Some good games in there. Yeah. Yep. Games. Four out of five uh, really hit home for you, and then Kingdom Hearts oh. 3 was, was <laughs> And then mixed. it's just kind of there. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yep. Yeah. All right, Logan, what, what is your list? Yeah, I had a few rules when I made mine. I, I didn't want any games that uh, weren't out yet, so I was just looking backwards. And then I also limited one per series because uh, if one series Every would Zelda. have three entries on this list if I uh, didn't limit it to that. Uh, so my number five is Kid Icarus Uprising. I don't know why. I just became 
so fascinated with this game back in the final years of Nintendo Power. I thought it was a gorgeous looking game for a handheld, which it was at the time. That was the best looking 3DS game and it still looks great. And I just read, I remember reading just this same like five page feature on it in this Nintendo Power magazine over and over and over, just waiting for it. I faked being sick the day it came out so I could just stay at home and play it all day. And it lived up to the hype. I love that game. I think I was just fascinated. Well, it was made by, directed by Sakurai, who directs the Smash Brothers series. So I had an attachment there, but just the control scheme was wacky. The fact that it shipped with a plastic stand was just wild to me. And it still is pretty crazy that they did that. But yeah, and it was, it's a fantastic game. And it's a shame the series has been dormant for almost a decade now. Uh, That game's almost 10 years old. And there's been no sign (laughs) of Kid Icarus coming back. Uh, My number four is one Zach also had, Last of Us Part 2. I rolled credits on The Last of Us. Zach watched me play that game, and then he immediately showed me the trailer for Part 2. And from that point on, I thought about that game at least weekly. And then, of course, just it appeared at multiple E3s with no release date, no window even announced. And then, of course, a number of delays at the finish line. And then finally playing it was, was very, very worth it. Number three, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. I feel like Gen 4, for my age group at least, was when Pokemon Fever was at its peak. Like Gen 3, I remember playing it, playing Fire Red and Leaf Green, and then everyone got a DS in elementary school. Everyone was looking forward to Diamond and Pearl. Uh, who are you going to pick? Pipla, uh, Turtwig, Chimchar. It was just a huge deal. I That's one of the biggest game launches I remember, and... Yeah, I just remember everyone, are you picking Diamond or Pearl? And you'd like coordinate with your friends. And that was for me when when Pokemon Fever was was at its height, was leading into those games. And then I think it it declined after that. Heart Gold and Soul Silver are fantastic games, but the hype was never as high as it was for the first DS Pokemon games with just this this Wi-Fi connection. You don't need the stupid adapters yeah. to trade with each other like you did in Fire Red and Leaf Green or the, the cable that you needed in Ruby and Sapphire. So yeah, that one was a big deal. Number two, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Going through the Wii U era, the Breath of Zelda Wii U was the light at the end of the tunnel where you're like, man, when this game comes out, it's all going to be worth it. And of course, it ends up coming out on the next console. I didn't even play it on Wii U, but it was announced in 2014, and they said it was coming out in 2015, and it did not come out until 2017. So it was a long road for this one, but it was very much worth it. Getting my Switch and Breath of the Wild on the same day is one of the most legendary gaming events that I can remember, and playing it on an enormous TV in the dorm room lounge was was just super fun. And then number one, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. And yeah, this game just keeps on giving. It's still going. And the hype was real. I got to go to E3 and watch it be played in a tournament. I got to go hands-on with it. And just every time they'd they'd give you a little bit of information on this game, it was just awesome. And it was never delayed. They said 2018 and it shipped. It shipped that December, which was remarkable uh, because Brawl got delayed um smash 3ds got delayed like this series always gets delayed but they they hit the mark with smash ultimate and i mentioned that there would be three from the same series on this list my number my top three would be smash ultimate smash wii u and smash bros brawl because i always anticipate smash more than anything else ever since melee so yeah that's my list and five games that all paid off for me i didn't have a a miss in those which was i was happy about when i put this list together nice all right, I'm breaking one of your rules. One of my games isn't out yet, and we know nothing about yeah. <laughs> it, but I'm still super hyped for it anyways. Uh, first one on my list, uh, Diamond and Pearl, and I also put Black and White on here. Uh, Diamond and Pearl, it was the same way. I was in, like, sixth grade, uh, and everyone was getting DSs. Man, that thing sold so many copies of the DS. Um, mm-hmm. But I would remember on, like, there were some days where, like, recess would get canceled because of rain or something. And so they let you do something in the room, and they had some, some computers in there. So we'd always go in and, like, go onto the Pokemon website and see if there were any new things about Diamond and Pearl that were coming out or any new information on the starters. I wanted Piplup super bad, and now I I don't <laughs> – I think he's really bad because I don't like Empoleon very much. Uh, <laughs> but uh-huh. just the hype and knowing that, like, all of my friends were going to be playing it as well uh was also a big part of it i think that's just like the perfect age 
it, you know, in like sixth grade of elementary school, what you're like 11 years old or something like that. I mm-hmm. feel like that's, that's the perfect time uh, for Pokemon craze to hit its peak and uh, to be on the DS that everybody owned or was going to own. I think that was just the perfect storm. And then for me personally, black and white after playing diamond and pearl, I was super excited for black and white. I picked it up midnight launch at GameStop and went to one of the like events that they did at the mall. They were doing like a mall tour for black and white. And so you get to go in and you would do like a stamp rally. I still have some of these like stickers of the starters from black and white. You got to go in and play like a little demo of black and white, which was super cool. Um, so I was super excited cool. for those. I feel like that was my peak was diamond and pearl and then black and white leading into that. And then ever since then it's been downhill. Uh, but but those two games yeah. I remember being super excited for. And for me, they both paid off. I love Diamond and Pearl, mm-hmm. and I still like Black and White. Not so much Black and White 2, but I still like the original mm-hmm. Black and White games. Uh, number four, Yakuza Kiwami 2. This one was more so a wait to see when it would get a Western release. Uh, it had been out in Japan for quite some time, and it was all about how you know, America was still trying, or the West was still trying to catch up. And so it was like, when are we going to get these games? Cause they don't want to be dumping them all at once, even though they kind of did that anyways. Uh, yeah, they did. I just remember being super excited uh, when that game got announced for a Western release and uh, bought that instantly when it, uh, when it went on sale, I think me and Logan were doing our road trip back then. I, I vaguely remember pre-ordering it when, uh, yeah, at, I think at some so. point yeah. when we were on, on this road trip a couple years back, um, but of course I'm hyped for, for all Yakuza games. Uh, but I think after playing Yakuza two and loving it as much as I did and seeing the Japanese footage of it, I'm just like, I'm ready for this to come out. And when it finally got announced, uh, I feel like a lot of Yakuza fans, myself included, were super excited for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, number three on here, Nino Kuni two. I played Nino Kuni one and absolutely adored it and was just sitting, waiting on Nino Kuni two. I, that game got delayed a couple of times. Um, and then it came out and I liked it. Not nearly as much as the first game. <laughs> Nino Kuni two uh-huh. is solid. It's, it's a solid game. It's fine. Uh, but I don't think it has the staying power of, uh, of the original Nino Kuni. And the other thing I remember that for is that it gives, if you got the, the premium edition, it would give you this like what paper craft. Zach, you were there trying to put that together. That is yeah. like the hardest thing on the planet to build. Like, cause you're trying yeah. to like, so those little paper like Japanese paper craft dioramas that yeah, are like, yeah, like this, 3D. like very small, yeah, intricate. Yeah. And they have layers to make a 3d image and they are so complicated well, and it was fragile like, that if you're putting it together, yeah, the paper would like rip and tear and you would like put in the next piece and the last piece would fall out. <laughs> it was weird. It, yeah, no, uh, it was very hard. It was weird, but I was super excited for that game. And while it didn't reach all of my expectations, I did have very high expectations for it. It was still a solid game, but bad, not bad by any means, but um, I was excited for that. Here's my here's my cheat. Saints Row 5. We know absolutely nothing about it except for the fact that Volition is developing it. That is basically all we know. Uh, but I absolutely adore uh, the Saints Row games, specifically Saints Row 1 and 2. I'm really hoping they go back to those games, but I, I assume they're probably going to go off of Saints Row 3 because that's the one that sold the most. Uh, but I still have a soft spot for three and four. Um, but just so many memories of playing those games. And it's been a long time since Saints Row 4. You had like, you had Gat Out of Hell, but that was kind of weird. And that, it's still even been a while since then. Uh, so for so many years off, I'm excited to see what direction they take for Saints Row 5. Because after four, they kind of just like blew everything up basically. Because that was just off in its own universe. And it was really hard to follow that up. Uh, so mm-hmm. I'm curious, uh, how they're going to basically soft reboot, uh, Saints Row with Saints Row five, but I hope it pans out cause I love those games a lot and I hope they bring it back to the style of Saints Row one and two. And then lastly, battle for bikini bottom rehydrated. I remember when this was first announced, I'm like, this can't be real. Like how in the world does a, uh, the TV show tie in game from 2001, 2002 get a remake Tw- yeah. 20 years it was just later. that good like it doesn't happen so good like no one cares about those games at least that's what i thought and then yeah. realizing that so many other people really did care about it as much as i did growing up just so many memories of playing that original game and being able to 
to get hyped for it uh, with a good friend of mine who also played it a bunch of, when we were kids together and just like being able to go through that that release with him and uh, and like seeing all the new information be like oh did you see this you know here's here's some of the new stuff they're doing they fixed kelp forest and, and all this stuff um, was fun and then when the game finally came out to be able to kind of play it alongside him and be able to talk about our experiences playing through battle for Bik bikini bottom again after you know a number of years since we last played it uh, was was a really fun experience and despite the glitches and the weirdness that that game has I that, that was still one of the funnest gaming experiences I've had in a long time I was just getting to to visit that game again so the game hurt me <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> I, I hate that that game had so many problems because if they fixed a couple of those it would have been totally fine but man those golden spatula glitches suck oh well yeah yeah still a good game yeah fun. still solid still love that game all right any final thoughts before we wrap this up i think we've reached the end hoping to wake up and uh learn about some diamond and pearl remakes and just look gorgeous. that is the best case scenario is a diamond and pearl remake i won't talk about this too much because this will already be out when that's out but I just have this like <laughs> bizarre mixture of just excitement and dread because I'm like, I love those games. I love those games so much. And yeah. knowing where Pokemon has been the last number of years and knowing where I've been with Pokemon the last couple of years, I'm just like, mm -hmm. this game isn't going to hit, is it? Yeah, after after Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, I highly doubt Which I like more, hit. and it didn't hit. I like Sapphire the most, and it didn't hit. And, mm -hmm. it, would just, yeah. and it would crush me if, if these games come out and they're bad, because I, I love Diamond and Pearl so much, and if they screw it up, which I kind of have a feeling they will in some way, <laughs> it'll hurt me a lot, but there's still a part of me that can't can't stop being excited for it just because of, of how much I like those games, and it scares me that they're 15 years old this year what in the world yeah zach any final thoughts from you um i think that by next week i will have beaten Hear me out okay one game one game a okay. new game final oh, a new fantasy? game a new game probably not no well one game in general okay. probably castlevania 2 all right we're not getting specific we'll to beat on that. it he's not not He's gonna take like an hour redemption 2 but no, I also want to play Concrete Genie since it's free oh, yeah. PS Plus this month. That is. Yeah. Did you it's only like a five-hour game? Nope. Okay. <laughs> you bought a bought on Black Friday. <laughs> One of those great Black Friday yeah. purchases that you buy and never uh -huh. play. Yep. Heard good things. Absolutely. About it. I think it's probably a solid game. All right, that is going to do it for us on this week's episode of Ode to Games. Check back in next week when we'll have all of our thoughts on this Pokemon presentation that we didn't get to this week. Uh, so you can hear our thoughts on that on next week's show. But for this week's show, that will be it. We are here on Fridays on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, other podcast streaming services that you may use. The audio version of the podcast is up on our website as well, odegames.com. If you want the video version of the podcast, that goes up on our YouTube page every single week at Ode to Games. So you can check that out if you're interested in the video version of the podcast. You can check us out on Twitter, Ode to Games, Twitch, Ode to Games as well. You can send an email to odegamescast at gmail.com. For Logan and Zach, I'm Kevin. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll catch you next week.